There we go. Good morning, everybody. Grace and peace to you from our Lord Jesus Christ and all the saints here in Central California. Kind of a chilly morning. It's, it's going to be 95 degrees outside today, but here in the, the data center, it's uh, it's a little chilly most of the time. So uh, anyway, I wanted to uh, just do one, just one more video on CrowdStrike um, since uh, the root cause analysis has come out since uh, I last talked about CrowdStrike. And I wasn't even going to make a video about this, but uh, <laughs> I got so many slaps upside the head from all the Linux admins out there laughing, saying, aha, this didn't happen to us. <laughs> yes, it did. Uh, maybe not to you personally, but uh, apparently Linux is not immune from CrowdStrike. Um, but we'll get to that. So first, uh, let me get over here, and I'm going to share this part of my screen. Uh, where are you? Where is it? That's it right there. Share. Let's share that. Okay, so CrowdStrike came out with this root cause analysis executive summary. I'm going to go with this first because it kind of tells you in a more high level what happened. Um, you know, uh, CrowdStrike Falcon Sensor uh, delivers AI and machine learning, blah, blah, blah. Uh, in February, CrowdStrike introduced a new sensor capability to enable visibility into possible novel attack techniques that may contain, that may abuse certain Windows mechanisms. Yeah, well, <laughs> not just Windows. Um, in March, they did a successful stress test, they say, whatever that is. Um, the first rapid response content for channel file 291 was released. So this was like, sounds like this is the first time they were really trying this. They added this, or they have this channel file 291, which is the one that, that we were deleting. Um, it was released as part of a current configuration update with three additional rapid response updates deployed between April and April, April 8th and April 24th. Uh, they say they performed as, ex as expected. Um, however, what they say is that the actual CrowdStrike sensor that's running on the machine expects 20 fields, 20 input fields. What's in these fields? I don't know but it expects 20, it got 21. It didn't know what to do. So uh, it was trying to read memory that wasn't there and uh, causing a system crash. That's, that's why they say this, this happens. And they say it's incapable of reoccurring. <laughs> we'll see. Yeah, while this channel, while this scenario with channel file 291 is now incapable of recurring, it informs the process improvements and mitigation steps that CrowdStrike is deploying to ensure further enhanced resilience. Man, you talk about a bunch of double talk. And if anybody from CrowdStrike's watching, uh, come on, you know. Oh, anyway, let's scroll down. CEO said some stuff, frequently asked questions. Um. Yeah, they just say again, the sensor expected 20 input fields and the update provided 21. Um, anyway, you can see the, uh, I'll post the uh, link to this website so you can read it in more detail. They've got a lot of technical details and yep, that's the file I was deleted. Uh, we were deleting them all. So, um, the, uh, the old, the problematic one deleted, the new one just, just got updated eventually. So this, this is what they say happened. Um, that's the executive summary. If you go in here, there's, there's another, uh, more in-depth, um, for all, for all the geeks out there that really want to get into, delve deep into what happened. I'll post the uh, the link to this as well. Um, 
CrowdStrike sent it out and it's on their website. So you could probably find it, but um, yeah, this, this particular document goes into detail as to why, um, what happened. Now I had some people out there saying, well, the file was just full of zeros. Um, but according to this, they're saying it just had, um, it had more than the expected number of fields in it. I, I don't know. Um, content validator. <laughs> okay, what are the, what are the reasons they said? Let's go back up here. I'm I've been scrolling through. Okay, the number of fields in the IPC template type was not validated at sensor time. Okay, I don't know what an IPC template is. It's they've got the definitions down at the bottom. When you guys download this paper, if you want to download it, you can read and see what it is. Um, second thing that happened is a runtime array bounds check was missing for content interpreter input fields on channel file 291. Okay. So it's delivered that used a non wild blah, 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 blah. Okay. I guess that this happens on the uh, on the software itself. I was, I'm not sure if this is uh, <laughs> human didn't do this or if it just this is part of what happened. I think we get down to the uh, the human factors down here. Uh, template type testing should cover a wider variety of matching criteria. Yeah, here. Both manual and automated testing were performed, but uh, obviously not extensive enough. <laughs> Mitigation, increased test coverage. Y yeah, basically be more careful. Um, the content validator, validator contained a logic error. So the software they used to validate the, the updates didn't catch it, apparently. So uh, anyway, and five, the template instance validation should expand to include testing within the content interpreter, interpreter, interpreter. I like that better. Um, okay, so uh, wh what I'm reading basically is, is they're not testing these things very well. Um, here, <laughs> six. Template instances should have staged deployment. Yes, thank you. Uh, that's what we all do. We don't just blanket get an update from Microsoft and just blast it out to all of our machines, you know. <laughs> Spray and pray, fire and forget. No, we don't. We <laughs> now I, bear in mind, I'm not the server guy. I don't do anything with this. I just I just watch them. I know what they do. I used to be a server guy. I'm not anymore. Praise God. Um, so when they get an update, they they deploy it to a small test group. Let it run for two weeks. There's no problems. Then they deploy it out to the whole thing. Um, any, any responsible manufacturer of software should have a way for you to test things before you deploy them in mass. And when I mean you, I mean the customer. So these, these deployments should come down to our local CrowdStrike servers and say, hey, a new one is available. Do you want to deploy this to a test group? Um, this, this whole thing of, okay, we've got a new update. Boom, it's going out to every single machine in the world. Uh, that's, that's ridiculous. Come on, guys. Do better. So now, now they're bringing in an independent third party whom they are paying, of course. So you know what happens when you pay somebody is they are going to give you the results you want. Um, so I, I don't put too much stock into these third party reviews because, you know, you're you're the third party's boss. So they're going to do what whatever they have to do to, to garner more business from you in the future. So anyway, like I said, this this whole document goes into painful detail. So if you know, don't ask me if if you really want to know what happened and dive deep into the registers. 
and see what happened. Um, this this file has it all. So, uh, like I said, I'll post the link to this in the uh, in the description of the video. Now, now to all you, all you Linux guys, God love you, um, that were crowing about the fact that if only I was running Linux, this wouldn't have happened. Um, well, you know, unless it was Debian. So uh, apparently, you know, yeah, we we had the blue screen of death issue. Okay, um, NeoWin.net, whom I've never heard of before, um, but somebody uh, somebody pointed this out to me that it had happened on Linux machines. Uh, one one of one of our viewers, and and thank you for that. Um, sorry, I don't remember the name off the top of my head, but I responded to your comment. You know who you are. And uh, thank you for bringing this up. So I couldn't find anything. So I asked ChatGPT and all it wanted to tell me about, ChatGPT is all obviously biased towards Linux as well. All ChatGPT wanted to tell me about was Windows. And, uh, but with a little bit of prodding, it, it gave, came up with two hits um, about Linux systems. So it turns out that similar problems have been occurring for months without much awareness, despite the fact that many may view this as an isolated incident. Users of Debian and Rocky Linux, I've never heard of Rocky Linux, also experienced significant disruptions as a result of CrowdStrike updates, not just Windows. So I know now you're gonna say, well, they shouldn't be using those, those distributions of Linux. Well, you know, <laughs> Okay, well, but it's Linux, right? The, my, my whole point is it, it, if you're using CrowdStrike, you're gonna have this problem. And uh, in fact, any company that does not allow staged updates is gonna give you this problem. So back, apparently way back in April, CrowdStrike uh, issued an update that cost all the Debian Linux servers um, in this particular civic tech lab, wherever that is, they crashed all at once and refused to boot. Um, so luckily the lab team was able to uh, remove CrowdStrike and uh, got everything back up. Um, I, I really like what he said. He Well, a team member involved in the incident expressed dissatisfaction with CrowdStrike's delayed response. It took them weeks to provide a root cause analysis. Sound familiar? After acknowledging the issue a day later. Um, yeah, because I think that they, they don't know what happened. So yeah, it's going to take them a, probably a week or two to figure it out. So I, I, won't, I won't fault them for taking that long to respond for a root cause analysis. Um, but the analysis revealed that the Debian Linux configuration was not included in their test matrix. Uh, yeah, that's the problem. They're, they're, it's hard. It's hard to test everything. That's why we should stage these things so you can test it in your environment. And if you have a problem, you can notify them. They can correct the update, send it back. You test it again. Okay, now it's working. Then you can roll it out into production. You know, partner with the end user, not just dictate to the end user. But I really like this statement right here. And this is one thing everybody can agree on, Linux, Windows, whatever. CrowdStrike's model seems to be, we push software to you, to your machines anytime we want, whether or not it's urgent, without testing it. <laughs> That's it in a nutshell. Um, yeah, and CrowdStrike users also reported similar issues after upgrading to Rocky Linux. Um, I've never heard of Rocky Linux, um, but it, it caused the same same issue there. And uh, there's there's another um, another article about it here also. Um, that's just talking more about uh, more about the same thing, saying yeah, don't worry, help's on the way. We've got a rapid restore tool that was for Windows mostly the. Linux folks seem to, to figure out what they needed to do fairly quickly. Um, so anyway, that's going to be my my final word on uh, on this CrowdStrike thing. Um, they came out with their root cause analysis. So, OK, now we know. Um, 
and they claim they're going to take some steps to make sure this never happens again. Uh, really, the only thing they can do to make sure it never happens again is is the staged rollout. You know, give us the ability to test test these patches before we push them out to everything. That's the only thing that's going to fix this. Sorry, guys. That's just guys being CrowdStrike. Sorry, CrowdStrike. That's really the only thing that's going to fix this at all. So, yeah, and root, root cause analysis. I had a CIO at one time that wanted a root cause analysis on everything. He just he just loved the term, I think, and it made him feel important if he could go back to the ex the executive board with a root cause analysis. You know, if AT&T went down for five minutes, you know, one of our carriers, AT&T, goes down for five minutes, he wants a root cause analysis. So you ever try to get a root cause analysis for a five-minute outage of AT&T? Or any internet service provider, it's like pulling pulling teeth. Um, so, root cause analysis can can take time. So, I, I won't fault them for that. So anyway, like I said, I'll uh, I'll put the links for this in the uh, video description. And uh, yeah, that's my last word. Let's hope uh, let's hope we all don't get called again in the middle of the night and work for twenty four hours to fix something like this so that's all i got for this week guys uh, if you like what you saw uh share subscribe thumbs up thumbs down what is it, what is it they always say like share and subscribe <laughs> click the notification bell and above all keep those prayer requests coming and uh to god alone be the glory we'll see y'all next week um let me stop the sharing so you can see my big ugly face. And I move this over here and that's so I can see you. And I will say, um, God bless.